pleased to introduce Dave Cavender, who is principal scientist with Adobe, who is concerned about uh, real-time content integration in, uh, with advertising and product information. And he has uh, been uh, looking at some of the behaviors and phenomena as consumers increasingly interact with each other through and with information through uh, digital and mobile technologies, uh, both the uh, content, but also beyond the content and beyond the product, uh, is going to give us a little bit of a window into what's behind the scenes now and maybe in the future. Dave. Okay, great. Thanks for having me here. Um, I work at Adobe. Uh, I'm a mathematical economist by training. Uh, I've been with Adobe for about a year. Um, I have a long career in industry. I spent my career applying math in industry. Uh, I work for Eli Lilly. I work for the Mars companies. Um, I work for Accenture. Um, I work for Best Buy. So I've been around here and there. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit. I'm going to give you four or five examples of some of the things that are changing in the world of, uh, call it creative, for lack of a better concept. Um, I'll show you some of the implications of how stories and content are changing. And then I'll talk a little bit about some of the math and some of the technologies behind um, what is increasingly, uh, for lack of a better word, a computer-mediated uh, result. And I think you'll find some of that interesting and it impacts some of the topics you're interested in. Um, just for starters, um, every time someone says the word digital, this little jingle goes off in my head and it's, it's something related to this idea that it's a mad, mad world. And obviously I think it's getting madder. That's one of my biases. But So I looked into it and then I found out that this came from Thomas Middleton and that got me going on, gee, what if Shakespeare had had Twitter, but don't go down that path. Um, this is... Um, there's lots of change happening, uh, particularly uh, this week is, um, what, Jay Leno's last week, right? Uh, we're going to talk about things like that. Uh, we're going to talk about how technology maybe is changing some of that world. Um, this is, uh, you mentioned Google. This is a quote, this is a paper from Halverian is the chief economist at Google. He's a professor at Berkeley. He's on Google's board. A lot of the um, a lot of the math that you talked about, a lot of the data mining, a lot of the algorithms that Google has created uh, are in his team. Um, he's talking here about a number of things, but I think the part that, um, by the way, my favorite TV show is uh, Persons of Interest on CBS. On I think it's Tuesday night, right, ten o'clock, and they have a machine watching everybody, right. Um, I'll tell you more about that, but he, he mentions it here. He talks about how many, many things are computer mediated and you may not realize that. Um, and it has certain consequences. Um, I had an interesting debate with someone at Google one time. Uh, I'm a mathematician by training. And if you remember college or high school algebra or calculus, you kind of had to do the problems in the back of the book, right? You probably couldn't get a good grade, right? Um, so I had this debate and he said, well, you just punch the button and it runs the solver and it gives you the answer. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. You have to understand what's going on. You have to have some idea of when it works and when it doesn't work. You probably need to understand a little bit more. And he said, no, you just, just let it run. And I thought that was a big mistake in the world where we're losing something when we let the computer mediate various actions. And as uh, people, we're forgetting how to do certain things. Some of those things maybe are important. I, I, I can't keep track of that, but I think that's part of what Halverian is talking about here. And I'll show you more about that in a minute. Um, this is the Hollywood. Someone talked about TV and movies. I've done a lot of work in TV and movies. Um, this is kind of the classic demographic issue that a lot of content is facing, which is the audience is changing, and how do I get to my audience? Um, I'll talk you know, my other and uh, this week, Leno and Jimmy Fallon are the poster child for this, I think. But um, my two kids are 28 and 30. Uh, first of all, at 11 o'clock at night on a typical Wednesday, Thursday, something, they're not watching TV. They're in a bar somewhere. So, you know, what's going on with changing this maybe isn't solving the problem, right? 
These kids are not consuming media at 11 o'clock at night or 11.30, right? They're consuming media in some other way. Um, okay, there's a different demographic, a different style. There's lots of other things that are great about Jimmy Fallon. Um, and by the way, the numbers are right there. He's, he's killing the numbers. Um, this is um, House of Cards. You may have read about this. There was quite a lot of, I work in big data. There's quite a lot of big data analytics in movies. Uh, another one would be Pandora, if you know Pandora in Oakland, the music streaming service, right? Um, when I worked at Best Buy, I actually helped inc incubate Pandora. But um, behind all this is an algorithm that sorts out uh, your preferences and the trade-offs and genres and all the other characteristics of the story, as well as many other things in there. Um, basically, this movie, House of Cards, was engineered based on what they learned in the meta-analysis and the big data. So they created a movie that they knew you were going to like. Now, uh, I'd sort of like you to vote more on what you liked, right? But that's, and that's an example of big data is really, this is like um, caffeine and soft drinks, or right? It, it's getting you into a certain place uh, with predictability. Um, I think you'll see a lot more of this in terms of how stories get told and how stories get engineered. Um, this is, this is a, a, an author in uh, Atlantic Magazine who tried to sort of dig into what Netflix has done and kind of broke it down step by step. And they managed, I think, to actually kind of figure out most of the, the genres and most of what was going on in there. But the other thing you found, which I thought was really interesting, and I, I work with big data all the time, and we call this outlier detection. Um, in all the preference groups and all the decision trees and all the math, somehow Perry Mason kept popping up. Now, I may be the only person in the room that actually remembers watching Perry Mason, but um, you know, that's just an odd feature. And in the article, he talks about this is a, you know, here's this odd thing that keeps popping up and it seems to be causal in how it's working, and nobody knows why. Well, that's part of what happens with machine learning. Right. It's sort of right, but you're not quite sure why. Mm -hmm. And it, it may be like crazy, or maybe it really makes sense. But you start thinking about things, and you go, well, you got to make decisions based on something that doesn't quite make sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I think that's a good idea or not. Um, here's another one that's interesting. This is Tesco. It's a very innovative retailer in the, in the UK and around the world. Uh, they have a lot of interesting technology around... Uh, they had, I'll talk about, I didn't actually work on this, but a friend of mine did. Uh, I think this is true. Maybe you can help me with this. I think if you belong to Tesco's loyalty program, or if you buy physical music in a store, you buy a CD or a movie, you get the digital copy as well. And it goes the other way. And then they give you tokens so I can share my tokens with my family. right? And now suddenly um, they're starting to get information the same way Netflix did about your preferences, right? But the other key thing from a European point of view is you as a person opted in to sharing that information and letting Tesco use it. That's the real, I think, guts behind that. And I don't work at Tesco, I don't know anyone at Tesco, but that's my outside in perspective of part of what's going on there. It's a very good strategy, right? Um, companies like Walmart, I think in the US actually don't have you know, material customer loyalty programs like that. Uh, when I worked at Best Buy, we had a database of at least 70 million consumers, and we knew everything you had ever bought in a Best Buy store. Uh, my daughter was a store manager in the store, and when you go up to the to one of the kiosks, they can actually look up, and they can see your whole purchase history right there. If they wanted to, they could ask you about it. They don't, but they know a lot about you. Um, so here's Tesco. Uh, they have a lot of gas stations, by the way. That's one of the things they do over there. Right. So what they've got is they, they're looking at uh, facial recognition to figure out, well, who's standing there, the gas pump, and then we're going to give that person a message based on facial recognition. Well, that's pretty slick technology, right? Hmm. Um, this is just one of many, many, many examples of computer-mediated computer activity. Um, obviously, Google Glass is another one. Um, I don't know where that's going to go. I mean, I don't know if I want to be filmed by somebody. Somebody at the office has Google S. Um, say, I, 
did, did, was it okay for that? I didn't ask you to, you know, I don't want to be filmed right now. Um, there's all kinds of information that you will get as a consumer that can be brought to you on that device, right? So suddenly your experience with everything you do while you're wearing those glasses is quite different, right? You can think of all kinds of good things. Suppose it's a doctor and he's doing surgery and, you know, there's some visual that can help him. There's all kinds of things you could dream up that are very positive. Um, but all that activity is now a different, uh, doesn't require you to walk around with that stuff in your brain, right? Just wait for Google Glass to give it to you, right? Um, this is a, my friend Richard Tabakawala is the chief creative officer at Publicis. It's one of the largest ad agencies in the world. Um, the origin of that was Leo Burnett in Chicago. Um, he sent me a note one day. Um, he's been at uh, Leo Burnett for 35 years, which is probably unheard of in the world of advertising. Um, he writes comments. He has a blog. He's a very interesting guy. Um, these are his comments on how creativity is changing. And you'll see that what he's talking about is how all of these devices... Right, and how the story gets put together using these devices is changing, in the, particularly in his world, how brands deliver marketing messages and how that story gets built, how it gets reinforced, and how it gets delivered. Right, so it's a very different perspective on you know his idea of what is creative is this idea of connecting the dots in new ways. Um, I work at Adobe. Um, we power the world of creative in a lot of ways, particularly on all our tools are built, Photoshop, all the tools we have for the web are built to enable creative people to do their jobs. Um, we've, um, a year or so ago, used to be able to buy those tools, you know, in a box, and then you take it home, right? Now you can buy it on the web, and you can buy a, basically a pay-per-drink subscription. You can use any of our tools for essentially, I think it's 49 bucks a month, um, and you can just use them or not, right? So the idea, we've opened up access to those tools to a very, very big universe of creatives that maybe otherwise couldn't get an upgrade to our latest, whatever, Dreamweaver or video or whatever tool uh, that was out there. It's been pretty successful. Um, we spent a lot of time uh, trying to get the creative people the digital technology that makes their stuff look better or work better. Right? That's what it's all about. Um, this is video. I'm going to talk more about video this is one of the video products, but um, this this release, which is, I don't know, last month or something, has 150 new features. We're constantly putting new features into the creative engine, right? One of the things I'll mention is that uh, on this, this question you asked about Eric Schmidt and solving some of these issues with technology, um, a lot of these tools can actually embed a watermark in the creative that you made in our tool, right? and let that flow through all the way through the process, right, through publishing, and all the way back through the analytics, right? So we know exactly what was on that piece of content, right, and who made it, and by the way, who else modified it, right? So there's some very interesting, I call it liquid data, but um, there's some very interesting technology, I think, coming that um, maybe change the rules. I, I haven't seen that yet, but I love the idea of a digital exchange you can buy and sell all these things in an exchange. It's no different than a SKU in a store, right? You just have to be able to tag it. Uh, the tags are there, and I'll talk more about the tagging in a minute. This is, um, as Olympics are starting, um, I'm very proud to say uh, the second year row, but Adobe authenticates and streams every event at the Olympics for NBC. So if you have a connected device we're doing the authentication, you know, that Martha, you've got a Comcast subscription and you can watch the Olympics on your, whatever it is, iPad or phone, and you just wanted to see whatever the figure skating, right? Boom, we, that cycle of authentication uh, and rights, right, happens through Adobe tools, right? And we're streaming all that content live. I mean, the, the amount of stuff that is moving in the internet is just staggering. I can't even tell you how much, you know, petabytes that's involved in all that. Um, all of that video in the end is targeted. We can talk more about that. Um, oh, sorry, this is another one. This is my car. Uh, it's actually a new car. Um, I didn't know my car was a computer. This completely like floored me. I spend every day in technology. 
It's a brand new car. It doesn't even it hasn't even burned like more than a you know one trip down the street, and it won't start. Now the reason it won't start is it needed two software updates. <laughs> I didn't know. I see. I said computer mediated, right? I didn't know my car was. I thought at least I could start the car. No, sorry, you can't. The emission technology won't start. Um, this is a Tesla. You can go see one of those in San Jose if you want. Um, it's got an incredible uh, sort of web centric dashboard, right? And if you look, um, if you look online, you'll find patents that from the voice recognition, right? I talked to. Siri, there's a TV commercial with Martin Scorsese, right? He talks to Siri and adjusts the schedule and whatever, right? Okay, so here you are, you're in your car, you talk to your car, and then, oh, they figure out who you are, where you are, what you're about to do, right? And now, the algorithms that we make at Adobe are going to send you something to that dashboard or out through Pandora, it's in your radio commercial on Pandora, that's targeted for you right now, right? That technology exists. You can look up the patents. They're on the line. Everybody who's in the ad business and technology has got them. Um, and everybody's working hard on what that's going to be. But you can, you know, again, that's all sort of commuter. What you're going to see is not what you thought you were going to see, right? What you're going to see is what somebody decided you should see. Right? The same thing. Um, this is, it's a little glommed up here, but... Um, What's going on in all this from a technology point of view is the same math that drives uh, automated trading on Wall Street is the same math that drives media. It's period over and out. That's what shows that drives your website. It drives the content on the website. It drives what stays on the website. It drives how the ads are placed. Right? These are all marginal trade-offs in effectiveness um, that are tracked uh, by sort of fusing that cookie pattern together. Right? And those cookies are bought and sold every day. All, you know, we mentioned Facebook, but everybody buys and sells cookies. And there's a whole big business of putting that whole event sequence together, right? Uh, and then doing something with it. That's what Amazon is doing it, LinkedIn, I mean, Expedia, go right down the line. All the people that are doing big data, a lot of them are doing it on the Amazon cloud, Amazon Web Services. Right? And you can bet Amazon by itself has got lots of stuff behind that. Um, so... Stand back, Wall Street's coming. You, know, you don't need a CMO, by the way. My theory is you just need a robot. Right? We can get rid of CMOs because all we need is robots. You know, machines can do many of those jobs better than people can do. Um, this is how Adobe thinks about it. All of this stuff has to happen like in nanoseconds. right? Um, we help profile the consumer. We help with the algorithms. We assemble the content. We deliver the content to the device, and then we improve the customer experience, right? That's what these tools are really uh, built to do, and it all happens really fast. So, anyway, that's what's um, behind some of your experiences today. There you go. Thanks a lot.